Hello and welcome to part two of this series on Burst Coin Mining. In this video we'll be going through the Burst Coin Wallet. So here we are on our Windows 7 desktop machine. It's an old computer that I generally don't use much but you can use Windows XP or you can use Vista or Windows 8 or 10. So about the Burst Coin Wallet. With every currency in the world we need a place to put our money. And the beauty of cryptocurrency, like Burstcoin, means that we don't have to rely on banks. We can become our own bank and create our very own digital wallet right here on our computer. So let's download the software that we need to create our wallet. So let's open up a browser. And I'm going to search for Burst Wallet. Uh, and the one that I want to use is this one from GitHub. Um, don't worry if you uh, haven't had a chance to write down the URL, it'll all be in the description. So over here we have clone or download, so I'm going to click download and I'll download the zip file. And we'll save that. So there we have our zip file. So let's close this window and we'll open up our downloads and I'm going to extract the files. And there it is. Right, so let's go into it. So we have a Burst Windows Wallet Master what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this and I'm going to put it on my C drive you can put it wherever you want, you can leave it in the downloads if you like uh, I don't want to because I have a habit of clearing out my downloads now and again and forget that I've got stuff in there that I'm actually using so here is our Burstcoin wallet program and as you can see we've got Burstcoin 1.2.8 which is the latest one of today um, and we've got various files in here that look all a bit strange but uh, I'll come to that in a moment. Before we start using this wallet or setting it up you do need to make sure that you've got Java installed on your computer because it does use the Java engine to run the wallet. You can either go to java.com and just make sure that you've got the up-to-date or you could actually have a look in your control panel where's Java there it is so I'll just check on my computer and if we look at about um, as long as I've got Java 8 or above I'm happy and there it is Java version 8 but as I said if you haven't just go to java.com and download Java right now the next thing which uh, could be a little bit confusing for a lot of people is we need to download what's known as the blockchain what's a blockchain I hear you ask well basically it's a, a digital ledger in which transactions made in cryptocurrency are recorded chronologically and publicly. So back in 2014 when Burstcoin was born, the blockchain would have been only a few megabytes because it really didn't hold much data because people had only just started using it. But now we're looking at around 13 gigabytes of data. Now we can go ahead and set up our wallet, but it will sit there for maybe 24 hours while it downloads that whole blockchain. Or we could cheat and we can download the blockchain on its own from a website. Again, I will put the description of the blockchain URL down below this video. Um, for speed in this, I've already downloaded my blockchain. So if we have another look in my downloads you'll see that I've got this burst underscore DB and inside there there are two files but the one that we're interested in is this .mv file and as you can see if I look at the properties it's actually 13 gigs in size so what I'm gonna do and this is what you would do if you downloaded yours and unzipped it and had ended up the same folder as long as it says burst underscore db as the main folder that holds the file you can let's cut that and we'll put that in our burst coin 1.2.8 folder and 
we'll just paste it. So there it is. So the next thing we need to do is run our wallet for the first time. And you could probably see down there that we have a run.batch file. Now you might be interested to realize that in order to get our extension numbers like run.bat and .exe and all those things, as you can see on mine we can't see that, but if I go up to here to organize and folder and search options and view, we can untick hide extensions for our all known file types. If I click apply, you'll now see that we have the extensions behind all of these programs. So there's the run.bat. I'm going to run this now by double clicking. And there you can see it's gone through its thing. Basically what it does to start with is it actually checks to see if we've got Java running. And there we see burst server 1.2.8 started successfully. So as in this instance it took a, a minute or two for it to get going. But once we see started successfully and two well-known peers finish connecting etc we know that we're uh, we're making good headway so now that's running we can just minimize that for a moment now we can open our burst coin wallet and again it may take a few minutes for this to start working in actual fact what I'm going to do is up the top here can you see we've got local wallet and online wallet it's actually trying to connect to our online wallet what I want to use is the local wallet so local to this computer um, because it's probably a bit more secure so if I click on that it then prompts me and says welcome to burst are you a returning user or do you want to create a new account well let's go ahead and create a new account so what it's going to do now is it's going to generate our passphrase, which is going to be a, a strange uh, set of, of words, as we can see in the top box there. So that is our passphrase. So what we want to do is let's just copy that, because we're going to need this later. Let me just open up a notepad file. paste that in there keep it out of the way make this window bigger uh, it says don't ever disclose your passphrase if you lose it you lose access to your account so don't give this to anybody so let's click next so it says your passphrase is very important in order to be sure that you've saved it please write your passphrase below and I copied mine to the clipboard so I'm going to paste it back in there and say next and there we go so we're sort of almost there so obviously at the moment we have our wallet we've got an account balance up here which is zero because we haven't got any uh, any funds in there yet so the the annoying thing about um, starting off with Burstcoin is that you need funds to start mining. But of course, how do you get funds without mining for them? Well, up the top here there is a faucets button. So let's just have a look at some of these faucets, uh, which are places which kindly donate Burstcoins for you. Let's try this one. Right, so your your burst coin account. Now this is not your passphrase. Um, let me go back to here. So up the top left we see uh, our burst address. Okay. So so what we need to do is we need to copy this. And again, I'm going to make a note of it in my notepad. So that's the address that um, if somebody was going to pay you any funds to your wallet you would give them that address. So let's go back to the web page and 
and we'll paste that in there and then click the button to say that I'm not a robot and claim burst. Now what it should do is send us one burst coin and then that should be enough for us to get started. Unfortunately this one has run dry so we can't use that. So let's close that and let's try the next faucet. Again. We'll try that. One burst sent. Fantastic. Right, there we go. So let's close that. So how long does it take to come? Well, again, we'll have to sit here and wait for a little bit before our account gets credited with one burst. Just out of curiosity, oh there it is, it's coming now. Just out of curiosity, I'm just going to have a look at this burstcoin.biz one. And we'll see if we can get some funds from there as well. Right, so as it says there, uh, this faucet is only for new users of Burst. It's not possible to claim several times. So, uh, hopefully it would have allowed us to have claimed that one. I guess we'll, we'll see if this gets credited. <coughs> now, what you'll notice is that uh, a transaction here has appeared in sort of um, italic style, so everything's leaning. If you go to... Um, the end here and hover over the end you're waiting to get confirmation so once you get confirmation you know that that's uh, that's all safe now at the top can you see it says warning your account does not have a public key this means it's not protected as other accounts you must make an outgoing transaction to fix, fix this issue so we don't need to worry too much about that at this stage because we are going to make a transaction soon because we're going to join a pool and start burst mining. So that's all we need to do at this stage. Um, in part three we'll start looking at how we prepare one of our hard drives in order to start mining and how to join a pool. I hope you found this tutorial interesting. Thanks for watching.